this thing is quite heavy. So this is a brother MFC L3750 CDW. Let's get her unboxed and take a look. What we've got going on. Setup guide, very good. Put that aside. We have the disc, probably details about the warranty. Probably, the most important part the power supply cable. It is quite heavy. It can be done on your own. Um, it is quite heavy, though. It's I mean, you, you're you're over 23 kilogram for this uh, for this machine, so it does have a bit of weight to it. And generally, when you come to um, machines that require toners and drums and all the rest of it, they do they can be quite heavy, but quite nice looking. Have a little look. look actually I like the look of this machine let's get the tape off it does look quite substantial I've got to say we'll go through the specs later I'll bring them up on the screen I've actually got a list of the running costs for it and how much the actual toners and drums cost and how, how long things last on it. So, which is quite important when you actually buy a new machine to, to use for yourself, whether it's at home or in the office, you know, whether you've got enough space on the desk, depending on how much you actually print. Four toner cartridges sit inside four drums. So pop these together, these there's oh, that's a bit fiddly, there we go, pop that out. The thing is you've got to be careful here because Make sure you put them all on a flat surface, the drum units, uh, this part sensitive to the light, the actual drum itself. You don't want to touch it with anything either. You're alright for a minute or two, but uh, you want to keep them out from the natural light. Okay. As much as possible. Put that off. That does come out. That off there, I bet that could be forgotten. Okay, take this off. Whoop, don't want to damage that. 
That's the chip. That's the cyan. Let's put that in the cyan slot because obviously I'm doing it in order, not just to confuse things. So there's the magenta against the magenta. Just that chip, throw that away. Plastic recycling. A yellow. Let's have a quick look around that. My document feeder, simplex, so it doesn't double sided copy. Uh, so you can get your hand in, I guess. Stop the paper from falling out the front, that's good. I've got a bypass, manual feed, looks single sheet, paper cassette. 250 grams, uh, sorry, 250 sheets of paper at 80 gram, I'd say. More on that, probably in a bit. USB on the front, print USB, probably scan to USB. Uh, Ethernet, USB, poor fax, if anybody remembers that. And the back for a jam point. Down. That's for envelope mode actually. So just to separate the fuser rollers a little bit. That's the jump point. That's the fuser unit. Ooh, how clean. Alright, let's plug her in. Fire up and see what happens. Now my, fir my first thoughts were looking at the machine, um, this machine wouldn't be for me. Uh, on an office point of view, I like to scan stuff. So, and I like to scan double sided because I get documents to me that are double sided. So I wouldn't get this machine before we began. For those who mostly print and only scan or copy the odd thing, then this is ideal as long as your usage is not too high. So a quick look at the box. I just wanted to know, it tells you on the box, what comes out of the box in reference to how many pages you can get up the starters. I don't see anything. But if I hazarded a guess, probably a thousand pages. But if it's different, I'll pop it up on the screen. 430 watts it runs at. wants to talk about firmware. Well for me I would only be using Genuines so far. That's asking about firmware to check for firmware updates. Obviously I can't, I'm not even connected to the internet yet. Let's have a look at the startup, tone of life. We're full at the moment, I don't know if you can see that. Let's have a quick look around the display and the menus. See on the home screen which is this button here, you've got your options, you can scroll along let me do that again. Scroll along and it gives you some options there. Press the home screen, takes you back exactly to the home screen. For me, if you go and look at the copy side of things, you bang something into the document feeder, you can copy it. This is this thing, the ADF on the top. Uh, you can copy something on the glass. It, it does give you the option to um, do reduce and enlarge density adjustment to make it darker and lighter. And it says two sided, which is off. This is the bit that can confuse you, you can get excited about. If I click on it, it's giving you the option for two-sided to two-sided. What happens is when you put a document in to copy something two-sided to two-sided, um, it basically lets you select it. You can basically copy mono or colour. But um, if I put a piece of paper in, let's have a look. if I put that in there and press mono start, so I've selected it, 
It says, no, the ADF is not available for two-sided documents. Please remove the document from the ADF. And then place the document on the scanner glass. So if you needed to do the odd double-sided uh, copy or scan, you could do it from the, the glass. But, you know, if you've got a few to do, uh, that's not the machine for me, uh, basically. Let's have another look around. So under the copy, yeah, two-sided off. Uh, what we've got if we press along here, so some other options. Yeah, two-in-one ID copy, which could, could be quite handy if you want to copy a passport uh, or a license, you put it on the glass. Uh, you press a copy button after selecting this mode, and then you'd spin it over and then press a copy button and it would print it out on a single sided sheet of paper, which is quite handy. So that's the copy side of it. Scan, let's have a look. Scan to your, your PC. Uh, scan to an FTP server, scan to folder, and to SharePoint, and to the web. Uh, the usual ones I tend to do is, is I would use scan to email, which it doesn't do either. But it does actually, you could set up scan to folder if you know what you're doing, or you could scan to a USB stick. I mean, it does come with software that you, that you can do twain scanning. That's probably what you would use for PC to PC, but I'll have a play with that. I'll maybe do a separate video on it. Where else have we got? Secure print. That could be quite handy if, uh, if a few of you share this same printer in different offices. Um, you can print print a document, put the password in, and then you can print it off. Uh, basically, you could walk up to the copier, press secure print, and then put your password in. You look for the document, put your password in. I mean, that's pretty standard on... A lot of office machines these days. Uh, why don't we set it up on the Wi-Fi network? So from the home screen, press Wi-Fi, set up wizard. Uh, yes, I do want to enable it. So obviously it must be set for Ethernet as default. Uh, <laughs> here's a few set up there. We'll go with keep a kitchen. And okay. And it's asking for the password. Connected. Right, let's put some paper in first, eh? And I'll print off the network report. Right, it's prompting when I've opened the cassette that the tray's removed and it's set for plain paper A4 and it's saying, do you want to change it? No, I don't. I'm happy with that. Do you want to show this question again? Absolutely not. Right, so um, I'm just going to bring it in. Okay, I'm finding it quite difficult to, uh, to get the display to show you the display because it's a fixed display. So if you have any people who are um, in a wheelchair and this is on the desk, this machine's on a desk, you can't tilt the display to use it. We're going to go into settings and then we're going to look for reports. So all settings, scroll down, uh, print reports and scroll down, network configuration. Do you want to start printing? Yes, I do. That's why I'm in there. Okay. So this is the state's report for the network and I've been allocated an IP address of 244 by DHCP which is done from the router so I'm happy with that. So why don't we have a look at the web interface. So this is the brother printer so through the web interface the machine is on the network. Uh, you can't do this if you're connected by USB this is wired or wireless. So once you put the IP address in this is what it comes up with. The first thing I'm going to do actually is do, give it a firmware update. Um, it's asking for a login password. Now, the password for this machine is um, actually on the back of the machine. It's actually next to the serial number, and it's not. It's not the type of. Um, it's not the type of um, password that I. I'll actually won't remember. You can change it, by the way. It's. You don't have to keep it. I can't even find the characters, honestly. Right, so now we're logged in as administrator, uh, we've got some tabs across the top. I'm going to go straight to administrator and we're going to go for a firmware update. So check for a firmware, check on the network. So a new version of firmware is available to update your device, just click update. So we'll do that now. Now this just take a, a little while, so I'm going to pause it just for now. So um, it's done its thing, took a few minutes. Uh, I knew it was finished when you could hear the actual brother machine rebooting. So let's go and check and see whether or not um, that's worked. Right, signed back in as administrator. Uh, I wasn't going to show that on recording again. It took ages to put the special characters in. So I'm talking about 
pluses, percentages, question marks, that symbols, that type of thing. Don't make it easy. So, um, not easy to remember anyway. So you can see once I sign back in, it's come up with this. The update was a success. That's brilliant news. Let's have, let's have a quick look around the web interface on this. And uh, I, I put the IP address in that we set up wirelessly. The machine is set wirelessly. Now, um, wired or wirelessly it will work fine because you're on the existing network. You put the IP address of your printer in and um, obviously you can access your machine through the web browser, whether it's Chrome, Firefox or Edge, whatever your preference is. Um, this will not work USB because USB doesn't use IP addresses. So we're having a quick look around. I'm logged in already as admin. Uh, we did a firmware update. Uh, we've got the address book here to put in fax numbers fax put in your id details in here your fax number your telephone number if you want to the company name in here uh, your copy modes your defaults on your copy modes your quality adjustments whether you want in text on photo so if you're doing a lot of photographs you may want to default to the photo if it's purely um, you're copying a lot of text just uh, written text you put it in text mode as default auto kind of determines itself quality adjustments this is for id copy you've got your contrast adjustments here and your density. Um, where else have we got? Color adjustments is here for your red, green, and blue. Moving along to print, uh, eco mode. Uh, probably just reduce the actual uh, temperature of the fuse unit a little bit, I would say. Uh, tone saved, try and reduce the amount of tone. Obviously, you probably lose a little bit of quality. Quiet mode makes it a little bit quieter. Uh, quality, quality adjustment. Uh, what else have we got here? tray so you could choose here what what paper you got in the tray you could do it from the off actually from the display of the copier as well two-sided mode whether you want it on as default output color so you can basically choose it's black and white as default calibration if you're finding uh, the uh, the colors are out of sync a little bit um, the color quality is not great should I say you can calibrate the machine does it automatically uh, auto registration this will if because uh, it's got four toner cartridges four drums if you like they've got to all be in time so you can do a registration on the machine if you find that they maybe the yellows jumped a little bit and it's not quite over the top of the other colors properly you can do a registration here uh, color settings so you can whether you set from the driver from the device itself so when you press print the print driver decides the colors rather than actually setting them up on the copier when you print uh, color mode vivid or normal or non or auto brightness adjustment contrast all that type of stuff uh, direct print there's your settings for that as well your scan options in here so you can set up a mail server um, and I've got a video on how to set up the mail server using Gmail so I'm not going to go over that now so that's in here as well notifications where you send a notification so scan file name, here you can actually choose how you want the file, what the file is going to be called. You can uh, tick a box to overwrite a file that exists already, which you don't want to do. Just leave that <laughs> as it is, probably. Uh, date and time, we would choose that instead for us in the UK. Uh, continuous or counter, basically, uh, on the file name. Uh, we probably want to leave it on continuous to be fair. Scan to USB is here. Scan to FTP. Uh, scan to folder SharePoint is here as well, so you've got some options in there. Obviously, you can do it through the the photocopier. On scan to USB, basically what the the name is going to be, uh, what type of file. So you can choose JPEG as an example instead. Multi-page and single page, so it separates a page. Or so if you have ten-page document, you can make it into ten documents, or you can have it ten documents could be one document. So there's document size as size as default. Uh, what else have we got here? Well, you've got some adjustments for brightness and contrast there. Scan to folder, set, showing you profiles and how they're set up, and setting the profiles up, and then scanning to PC. Pull scan basically is a Twain driver, so you could use a, a brother application, software package, and uh, you could scan physically and pull the document from the document feeder. Uh, administrator, there's some options on administrator, changing, changing your password. Um, there's not a lot here that you'll actually play with. Uh, the, the date and time, you can set your date and time up. The reset menu, you could uh, reset the machine. You could do a factory reset, which wipes it. If you're upgrading your machine, you're selling the machine, then um, 
that's probably a good thing to do so you've got none of your own information stored on the machine at all uh, if you scrap it or sell it on and uh, auto, firmware auto check to check uh, you or, or firmware auto check yes whether you wanted to check automatically store print jobs um, if people don't print the you know like secure print that type of thing so if you send a print job from your computer and you want it to store it until you walk up to the machine which is great if it's sensitive material uh, if you forget about it how long does it store it before it deletes it and uh, yeah enable rollback so if you have a problem with firmware update you can roll it back and the network so it says it's wireless at the moment it's not uh, wired um, interface the protocols under protocol you could be you've got some options here that you can deactivate or activate uh, AirPrint as an example, uh, SM, SMTP scanning. Uh, moving along here to across here because we're already on the network tab. Um, is click to wireless because I'm set up wirelessly. This is what IP address and subnet masking gateways that uh, DHCP is giving me as in my router. So you can physically change that if you want and turn off DHCP basically and assign your own IP address. So you can see the DNS IP which is just my router. I've got a BT router, that's what I've got. And BT routers... Um, Normally use two five four on the end there. Okay, so that's just a quick overview on the web interface. Obviously, you can do all this through uh, through the the actual machine from the control panel if you so want to. But on my, you know, I prefer to do it through the web interface. I like it this way. And, and uh, you can add you can add the machine to uh, your favourites. So you know, if you uh, want to keep an eye on your toner levels, this is a fantastic way of doing it. Really, you can rather than get up and go to the display, touch the display, go and check the consumables from the display. You can do it from here, which is fantastic. All right, let's open her up a little bit and we'll have a look inside the machine. Document feeder, simplex, not duplex, as in doesn't do double sided. Okay, it's. Uh, quite compact seems okay uh, lift the machine this way grab any paper out from the middle machine and then you've got a little handle here lift and that shows you the machine itself where the toner cartridges drums transfer belt that type of thing uh, this has got LED arrays on it it's not laser I do prefer LED arrays rather than laser uh, they use less electricity and the quality is pretty good and you've got less moving parts which well that's got to be a bonus for reliability I think it's actually quite well built. It's heavy, which is always a good thing in relation to quality on a, a conventional machine. Anyway, inkjets are a lot lighter, and I'm more of an inkjet fan. They're cheaper to run, and basically they use a lot less electricity. Um, anyway, in and out, really easy. Take one out, and it has a little lever here, and you release it, and it takes the toner cartridge out, like so. And that's the drum unit. Now with the drum unit, this is it here. If you get quality issues, it's always good to start with cleaning this. Like that. That's the corona wire. Like that. Let's give it a clean. Make sure it goes straight back to the two arrows right there. Otherwise you'll get a big streak down the page. Just there, like so. The toner cartridges are here. So when they need replaced, they're easy to swap out and easy to put back in. There we go, like that. So let's go further inside the machine. We'll take all the drum units out and we'll move them out the way. Somewhere level, I don't want anything underneath them, nothing at all. And if you're going to keep them out for more than a minute or two, minutes or two, then you need to cover them up as well. And don't put them on top of each other, okay? Because you'll damage them. You'll end up with marks on the drum, which will show up on the paper when you're printing documents off. So I'm just covering them up with some paper, just to keep the light off them. So inside now, once we've took the drum units out with the toner cartridges, you've got the transfer belt. And there's the transfer belt here. So that just pops off like this. And this is it here. That's it there, look. So hidden at the bottom, underneath the transfer belt, is the waste box. Now, um, it's underneath the transfer belt, so you have to take all of the uh, drum units out with the toner cartridges still attached, then take the transfer belt, and then you're left with this at the bottom. 
I'll be honest with you, it's not really often you need to replace one of these. I think it's 50,000 pages. So I have the slots in there like that. Here we go. Um, when you take it out, by the way, um, you can actually see the paper inside the cassette below it. So just pop that back in there, and then we'll put the transfer belt back in. That's it, and then we'll put the drum units back in. Try not to trip over anything. There we go. I'm going to put them in order, black against the black. And then the Scion, aka blue. And then you've got the magenta, which is next. And then you've got the, the yellow. So quality wise, I mean, I've been on site, fixed machines. Uh, people complain that they've got issues with the machine and it's printing quality, guaranteed, probably on compatibles. I'm not writing compatibles off. I think it depends where you get them from. The cheapest is not always the best. Uh, there is some good suppliers out there that you know do good compatible toners. It's just that there's some bad ones out there as well. So just be careful of that. But generally speaking, if you're having print quality issues, then the first you wanna look at is take the drum unit out and give that a wipe. Uh, a, you know, scroll along there. That's the chrono wire. Give that a wipe. If you're finding that there's a lot of toner falling onto the transfer belt, it's a good chance it's coming out the bottom of the drum unit. So if you're getting yellow lines, it's going to be the yellow drum. If you're getting blue lines, it's going to be the cyan drum. And it won't be the toner cartridge that's causing the lines, it will be the drum unit. Um, if you're getting splodges specific to a colour, it probably is the drum unit as well. Um, if you're getting marks on the page that you can rub off with your finger, you're probably looking at the fusey unit. But it feels very well built, as I say, quite heavy, not easy to, to take out of a box on your own, that's for sure. But over, overall, it's not a bad machine, as I say, on a good thing, the good side of things is LED technology, um, feels very well built, bundled with loads of software. Uh, weakness, that side of thing, I don't like the fact that you can't adjust the display, uh, so it's hard to see, you have to stand over it. It's only got a manual feed, and the document feeder is only simplex. Right, so what's good about this machine then? Document feed has got 50 pages, it's automatic, it's two sided print, so you can print double sided, but you can't copy double sided because the ADF is simplex only. Uh, it's wired, it's wireless and it's USB which is always good. It's 24 pages a minute, uh, that's the speed in colour or mono. It's got a 9.3 centimetre display. It's quite heavy at 23.4 kilogram, I think I keep mentioning that. The dimensions are 410 by 47 by 41 centimetres. That's the width, depth and height. So, you know, make sure you've got space for it. It's quite quiet, actually, for, for this machine. But again, it's probably because it's LED technology. So you find that uh, things are a little bit quieter. And uh, as I say, they've got less moving parts. You can't complain about that, which means better reliability. When, when it is printing, it does use quite a bit of electricity. I mean, you're looking at about 430 watts when it's printing. It's When it's sitting there with the display in right now, it's, it's doing about 75 watts. And uh, when it's sleeping, when the display's off, and it's sleeping, it's, it's running about 10 watts. On the, on the paperweight point of view, it does up to 163 grams, which is always good. It works with Windows and the Mac, uh, as well as Linux, but it's best to check that. I've never checked with uh, Linux before. Uh, you can email, you can scan to OCR, bundled with loads of software that you can get, the usual type of thing. So the mail server, scan to FTP, SharePoint, uh, scan to USB stick, uh, you can print from a USB stick. Uh, the paper cassette holds 250 sheets of paper. The manual sheet is single sheet, which I'm not a fan of. Now running costs. This is this is the bit that um, can catch people out, to be fair. So based on Brother's Own Figures, uh, this is based on 5% coverage, by the way. So Brother say that you can do up to 3,000 pages, right, on a toner cartridge for black. 
Now please note that if you do a lot of black and you don't do a lot of colour, you're still going to use the colour because the toner needs to lubricate the drum. Okay, so it only uses a very small amount, but you will use toner uh, from the colour cartridge as well when you print majority black. So that's why if the machine generally runs out of colours, you may not be able to just print black only. 3000 pages divided by 69.90 came out at 0 0.024 pence per page. That's nearly two and a half pence per page, okay, in black. That's how much it's costing roughly to run, depending on your coverage per page. But please note that if you're thinking, well, I only do mostly black, I only do the old color, well, um, the drum unit inside, the drum units, there's four drum units, they all rotate at the same time as the paper passes underneath. So when the drum rotates, it needs lubricated by the toner. So you always get a trickle of toner on the drum. So, you know, you're going to use toner there as well, even though you're a very small amount. But when the yields are only 2,300, then you probably still burn through it quite, you know, within a reasonable time. You're thinking, how come? It's the same on an inkjet. I can't argue really with that. Um, it's, it's, it's the same on an inkjet. When, you, when you're printing black on an inkjet, uh, and it does a clean, it actually uses the colour ink to make a clean as well, I'm afraid. If you take cyan, magenta and yellow, £79.90 times 3 gives you £239.70. So, you know, if you need a set of colour toners, you know, you're part with nearly 240 quid. you divide that by the 2300 pages that you hope to get out of those cartridges, will give you a running cost of just over 10 pence per page. So every time you print a colour page, it could cost you 10 pence in real terms it might even cost you more because it's based on five percent coverage on an a4 sheet of paper which is not a lot you've also got to take into account running cost wise on other consumables within the machine it's not just the toners and the drums you've got to think about the about the actual transfer belt as well as the the waste box at the bottom so the drum unit does 18,000 pages and you know the suggested retail price of one of those is 113.99 that's including that and you'll probably be able to get a better price i'm not sure the waste toner at the bottom underneath the transfer belt uh does 50,000 pages so it does last some time and they're not expensive they're, they're less than 17 pound um when i googled it and it was the same for the transfer belt the transfer belt is pricey but the the the, the duty cycle is up to 50,000 pages and they're about you know, 85, 90 pounds, including the VAT to get one. So when you take into account, if you're printing quite a lot, that's quite a lot of toners that you're going to have to keep swapping out on the machine. The drums need replaced roughly every 18,000 pages. So overall, it's not, it's not overly cheap to run. Uh, and I can obviously see why buyers go for compatibles instead, because obviously this will reduce overall running costs. Um, but I, I have been out on site fixing machines due to compatible toners as I mentioned earlier so yeah